this we call B. Yeah. Let's say we're working with this angle. Let's call this angle T. Can you tell me sine T, cosine T, and tangent T? Uh, tangent T, tangent T. Isn't, um, wait, cosine, cosine. Sine T equals to, remember the definition? Sine T equals the opposite side opposite of the hypotenuse. So it does. Yeah, tangent is opposite over hypotenuse and cross. No, no, not tangent, sine. A sine. sine. Sine equals to opposite over hypotenuse. Yeah. Right, so okay, in this case, what's the sign? The sign is A. Uh, uh? I'm sorry, sorry. So it's A over C. Good job. It's A over C. Yeah. Then what's cosine T? Uh, cosine T. It's B adjacent. over C? Yeah, B over C, because adjacent over hypotenuse. Who's adjacent means next to it, you know? So A is opposite to T, and B is adjacent to T, to the angle yeah. T, so it's B over C. What about tangent? Uh, tangent is... Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So it's A over B. Yeah. And also you could sign over cosine. Hmm. Those are the relations. And also one more, we see here A square, we know Pythagorean theorem, right? Plus B square equals to C square. Hmm. And that gives us very important identity for trigonometry. So number one important identity, sine square, sine square of t plus cosine square of t equals to one. Oh. Okay, so, so let's go back. Let's go back. So now we know trigonometry is all about the right triangles. Mm -hmm. Right, when we have a triangle, you know, we define sine as a ratio of the sides, cosine as a ratio of the sides. Talking about the ratios of the sides, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go back to our question. So this is a 35A. 35, question 35. So this is the homework, 15. Question 35A. Okay, so James, you said we, we measure the angle. So this is zero, the blue dot is zero. We start from here, we measure angle five pi over four will end up here. Mm -hmm. Then we connect this point with the origin. So this is called a co-terminal line. All right, so mm -hmm. this line it's called a co-terminal line. Yeah. Right. Why it's called a co-terminal line? Because five pi over four ends here, but if we keep running one more circle, five pi over four plus two pi ends here, six pi plus five pi over four ends here, a pi plus five pi over four ends here. The infinite many angles ends at this same point. So it's called a co-terminal point, and this line is called a co-terminal line. Mm -hmm. So we want to form a triangle. So we connect this point with the origin. Then we drop a perpendicular line to the x-axis. Now mm -hmm. we form that triangle. So given this angle, 5 pi over 4, we're looking at this reference angle in this triangle. And this angle is its reference angle. So which is this angle minus 180, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how we get pi over four. Oh. Okay, so, B. what is B? Let's try B. What's the so, angle? Uh, uh, for B, it's <clears throat> 
pi over three. A p is a t is a pi over three. No, what's the original t? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It's seven pi over three. Okay, it's a seven pi over three. So which angle is this? So let's 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 use another color. Let's see. Let's use a purple color. Okay, seven pi over three. We can simplify a little bit. Nine nine three twenty. That's uh nine one eighty to seven eighty sixty. It's in quadrant. Wait, what angle it is or yes. what quadrant? Which quadrant? Uh let's see. Uh, is it in quadrant one? It's in quadrant one. Because we can simplify to be two pi plus pi over three. So two pi is a six pi over three. So seven mm -hmm. pi can split into six pi and pi. Mm -hmm. And two pi, well, let's measure that. So we start from this point, right? We were running around, running around, that's two pi. Mm -hmm. Two pi, then we run pi over three, right? So end up here. Yep. So then how do we form the triangle? We connect. Uh, Point. So the point is here on the unit circle. You connect this point with the origin. You connect the point with the origin. We drop a perpendicular line to the x-axis. We now we have a right triangle to work with. Mm. So where is is the reference angle? The reference it's, angle is is the angle here around the origin. Mm. Make sense? Yep. So that's why this reference angle is pi over 3. So the reference angle we always find in the triangle. So we need to form the triangle. Mm. All right. Okay. Anybody has any questions? Okay, James, keep trying, okay? Keep trying to okay. present, but make sure you understand this. If you yep. have a problem, you can, we have a tutor. We are assigned a course tutor. Mm -hmm. So Ernest, have you, tried, have you been trying to work with him? No, actually, I've been doing my assignments all by myself, because, you know, I other see. stuff. Right, because I don't see you really understand how to find the reference number. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not sure if I'm making sense to you, but if, whenever you have homework problem, because I cannot help you with your homework, but he can help you with your homework and with your presentation too. Mm -hmm. To try to work with him. Because uh, mm -hmm. without this foundation, it'll be chaotic when you go to calculus course. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. Okay, so we're going to talk about something more. So make sure, so make sure you understand how to find. Also, same thing, right? If we in the second quadrant, if the angle ends in the second quadrant, you know, we we'll make another triangle. We we'll make a triangle. Yep. We connect. We we'll always connect the point with the origin. We we'll always drop a line to x-axis. Then we see this triangle. So the reference angle would be this. Mm -hmm. In the fourth quadrant, right? If the point ends up in the fourth quadrant, we connect with the origin. We drop a line to the x-axis. This is 90. The reference angle is this one. Mm. Okay, keep trying. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, James. You're welcome, Professor. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I has. Uh... Okay. Let me see. Okay, Jeremy. Jeremy wants to show sixteen. Uh, no, I mean sixty-nine from homework sixty. <laughs> Uh, I changed my mind. 60, yeah, 66. 66, okay. Then Rina, yeah. 70. And Natalie wants to show uh, homework from 15, homework 6 from 15. Okay, so, so 15, 16, right. You know, the concepts are kind, kind of uh, difficult. So we, 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 you know, we will uh, spend more time on those topics, you know, until we understand it. 
But this is a big part of calculus. Without this foundation, it's difficult for calculus. So my uh, my presenter. Yeah. Oh, have I? Yeah, I made everyone present. Hope hopefully everyone can present something. Okay. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So 66, um, I did my best for this one, is to like find the trig values. And it is cos t equals to minus 4 over 5. And I find that this, it is sin, sin t equals to square root minus square root. 1 minus cos 2 to t equals to 1 minus parentheses negative 4 over 5 squared. Eventually, I ended up getting, and then I multiplied um, 4 squared, and then eventually I ended up getting 1 minus 16 over 5. And so I subtracted 1. Hold on a second. You mean 16 over 25, right? Because you square 4, you square 5. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, sorry. 16 over 25. And then I subtracted 1 and 16, and which is square root negative 15 over 25. And then I... Um, Hold on one second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, Jeremy. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. So you're using the identity, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals to one. Yes. Right. Okay. Then you said, okay, sine squared equals to one minus cosine squared. Then sine equals to square root of one minus cos squared. And uh, yes. that could be plus or minus. But since, since this is in quadrant three, right? So in quadrant three, yes. the sine value is negative. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Then you plug in cosine value because cosine is given. You plug in cosine value. You simplify. Right. Then you get 1 minus 16 over 25. 16 over 25. Okay. Then, so this equal sign, the negative sign should be outside. The next equal sign, you have a negative 15 over 25 square root. The negative should be outside, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Right. And also, it's not negative 15, though. Because what's 25 minus 16? Because one, you change one to be 25 over 25. Oh. Right? So square root of okay. one minus 16 over 25, you rewrite one as 25 over 25 because you need a common denominator. Right. Right, so what's 25 minus 16? That's nine, right? Nine, right, that's nine. Okay. So that's nine. So this one, so the second to the last equal sign is not right. Okay. Right, so let's forget about that. Then let's see this, you, you boxed it. You boxed it so the, the square root of 10 should be square root of nine. Then what's the square root of nine? Three. Three. So the value should be 3 over 5, but being negative or positive? Um, positive? Oh, wait, negative, right? Because it's the negative outside the square root? Because in, in third quadrant, right? In third quadrant, sign value is? All students take a calculus. In third quadrant, only tangent and cotangent being positive. OK. All other values are negative. So this, the answer of this should be negative 3 over 5. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. I'd like you to try another one. So since now you know better. So later on, try another one, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. And also okay. James. But James, if you can try another one, all right? Because that's oh. the only, you know, there's only eight of us. Oh, re really? Yeah, there's only A of us here, so we have time. We have time. Let's spend time on this. Oh, okay, uh, Rinda. Because it's a time to learn. It's not about something else, right? It's, it, it, it's about the learning. 
Okay, then Rina and Natalie. Natalie, whoever is ready. And James, show, keep, you know, find another one to show. Okay, Rina, you're right. If you're ready, go ahead. So uh, this is homework 16, number 70. And I have to find all the trig functions, I mean the values. So for secant t is 2. And then the information was given to me sine t uh, is less than 0. And I forgot the t for secant, but there's a question for t. Right. So, um, I just wrote down the information for myself that secant t is 1 over cosine t. And then I wrote down another information that cosine of t is x. And then since the sine of t was given to me that it's less than 0, I wrote down that sine is y, but it's less than 0. So based on the four quadrant, um, it cannot be in the second or the third quadrant because uh, x has to be positive. And then, because oh, the x, the reason that I said that x has to be positive because secant of t is positive, and it's the reciprocal of x, so x can only be positive, but sine has to be less than zero. So I figured out that this secant t is in quadrant four because sine is less than zero. So based on that information that it's in quadrant four, I found cosine of t which is the reciprocal of 2, so it's 1 over 2. And then I use the unit circle formula to find the rest of the values. So I plugged in cosine t for x, and then I, and then I got 1 over 4 plus y squared equals 1. I moved everything to the other side so I can solve for y. And then I ended up with y squared equals 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4. So I combined these, I ended up with 3 over 4. And then I took the square root on both sides to get rid of the exponent and ended up with y equals plus or minus uh, square root of 3 over 2. And since it was in quadrant 4, cosine is the only positive value, so sine here is negative. And then, so sine of t is negative square root of 3 over 2. And then for tangent, it's y over x. So I wrote down the negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is negative square root of 3 for tangent. And then I found cosecant of t. Oh, I wrote down the information. It's 1 over sine of t. And then the cotangent of t is 1 over tangent of t. So then I um, plug those in. So it's 1 over uh, negative square root of 3 over 2 for cosecant of t, which is negative 2 over square root of 3 over 3, because I had to rationalize the square root on the bottom. For cotangent of t, I also plugged in for tangent on the bottom. Uh, and since it's negative square root of 3, I had to rationalize this also. So I ended up with negative square root of 3 over 3. Perfect. Anybody has any questions? That's a perfect solution. Thank you. Thank you. And Natalie? Yes, Professor. OK. Uh, can you see my screen? I think it's coming. Yes, yes I see now. Yeah, I'm doing question six. Okay. So this was a sine five pi over six. So first of all, I found the reference angle. And since like through ABC is all is just five pi over six, so I did it once. So for uh -huh. that. Natalie, did you find all other trig functions? 
No, it said to find the number. Oh, find the reference number. No, no, the reference number. Let me pull up the question. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, who was that? On this number. It's not coming. 15, let me see. 15, right, 15. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, find the exact value of all two functions. Yeah, yeah, find the other two functions. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I found a reference angle for 5 pi over 6. And it's here, pi minus 5 pi over 6 will give you pi over 6. That's a reference angle. Why is that? Because like, I yeah. use the unit circle. If you draw the, the circle, right, 5 pi over 6 is almost close to pi. And the second right. part is almost close to it there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the terminal points, what I did was um, you gave us this table, and I know that sine okay. is y and then cos was x. So I used the table to find the points for this. So I did, um, I did find sine of pi over 6, and then it gave me root 3 over 2, and I did cos of pi over 6, and it was 1 over 2. So that's how I used to find my terminal points. And because it's in the second quadrant, the x value is negative. So I got negative pi of negative root 3 over 2, comma, 1 okay. over 2. And so sine 5 pi over 6 would be the y value since sine is y. Okay. So well, sine... Uh, 5 pi over 6 is 1 out of 2. And then for B, cos 5 pi over 6 is x. So cos 5 pi over 6 equals negative root 3 over 2. And for C is 10. So 10 5 pi over 6 is y over x. That's the same as sine over cos. So I did divide 1 over 2 by negative root 3 over 2. And then I found a reciprocate value. Yeah, yeah, and then that's how I got this. I rationalized the denominator that was root three, and then I got this. Okay, great. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. But trig, we have six functions. We also have a secant, cosecant, and a cotangent. No, but it gave us only a, b, and c. Uh, uh a, b, and c. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean the question, right? From five to twenty-four, find the exact value of the trigonometry function at the given real number. Oh, I only thought. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. I got you. So you did the five, you did the right, with you did six with A, B, C. Okay, yeah. you're right. You're right. Great. Okay. Good job. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay, let's see. All right, James, you want to choose a new one to try? Uh, actually, not yet. I'm still looking for what question that I can rightfully answer. Oh, actually, well, okay, let's ask it this way. Do you have any questions for homework 16? Oh, as of right now? No. Yeah, you can ask it right now. Let's, let's figure out together. Actually, I haven't started with homework 16 yet. Oh, okay, not yet. So do you yeah. have a question for 15? Let's see, uh, just checking my homework again. Okay, Natalie just showed six. Does that make sense for you? Does six make sense for you? Actually, yeah. Yeah, actually okay. for homework uh, 15, 5.2, I actually get it since it somehow correlates to the first one, you know, 5.1, the reference yeah. angle yeah i actually get it okay all right okay yeah maybe you could try 16 then maybe ask questions later okay jeremy do you want to choose a new one to show no sorry i'm not comfortable no well let's figure out together then let's 
Okay. Um, let's let's choose one. But it's agreed. You know how to you know to use identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That's a you know you 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 know how to you know how to use that. That's um. So I have two, three, four, three. So if it's in the first quadrant, it's kind of easy, right? Let me see. Let me see if I can find. Um. Okay, let's do seventy one all together. So seventy one. 71 sine t equals to negative quarter and secant t less than zero. Okay, I'm going to share the black and white board to see if this makes sense for all of us. This is a difficult topic. That's why let's spend time on this. So this is question 71. This is for homework 16. The so homework. Number 16, question 71, all right? So this is a very difficult, probably the most difficult chapter of the whole course. So 71, we need to find, so we need to find uh, all other, well, let's do that, check functions, okay. All other kind of all other values of check functions, and the given condition is a sine t equals to negative quarter, and the secant secant t is less than zero. So 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 we need to find cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and the cotangent value, right? Let's draw the picture. Let's start with the picture. Right. We know all students take calculus, right? So first quadrant, every trig function value is positive. Second, only sine and its inverse cosecant. So sine and cosecant being positive in second quadrant. All students take calculus. Tangent and the cotangent positive in third quadrant. All others are negative. So fourth quadrant, only cosine and the secant being positive. Other values are negative. Okay, so let's mark this. So now we have sine t equals a negative value. So sine t equals a negative, sine t equals a negative. So sine being positive here, being positive here, first quadrant and second quadrant. Sine being negative here, being negative here, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. So we think a triangle, so the triangle we're working with could be in third quadrant, could be in fourth quadrant. Now let's see second condition. Secant t is less than zero. So what's a secant? Secant is a little bit difficult to remember, but think about a secant is one over cosine. Okay, secant t equals one over cosine t. So if a secant is negative, that means a cosine is negative. That means a cosine is negative. So that means this is negative, right? So cosine is positive in fourth quadrant. So cosine in ne is negative. So sine is negative, cosine is negative, only in third quadrant. So we look uh, we look at a, a triangle in the third quadrant. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay, if anyone has any question, let me know, all right? James, if, if I sound confusing, ask me questions. 
Okay, sign be negative uh, two places, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. Cosine be negative, secant be negative also impl implies cosine is negative. Cosine is negative is in second quadrant and third quadrant. So with these two conditions, that means the triangle we should draw is in the third quadrant. Okay, so now we're working with this triangle. So this is our angle T, right? So this angle is angle T. So sine equals a negative one over four, right? Remember four is hypotenuse. The denominator is hypotenuse. It's always positive. Hypotenuse is always positive. But this is a negative one, right? X value is negative. Because in the third quadrant, right? So the Y value is also negative, also negative. So how can we figure out the Y value? Well, as, um, as James applied earlier in his homework, he said, okay, he used this identity, sine squared T plus cosine squared T equals to one. We're going to use this identity. This is a super important identity for trigonometry functions. So let's use this identity. So, so we know, so sine is given, right? Negative quarter. So let's plug in. So we'll get a negative quarter square plus cosine square equals to one. Well, what's, what's negative number square being positive? Like quarter square, the one square is one, four square is 16, so we get one over 16. Because we need to find, we want to solve for cosine, right? So cosine square equals to one minus one over 16. Subtract we subtract one over 16 on both sides, or we think we move one over 16 to the other side. When we move, we just switch its sign. Positive this side, when we move to the other side, becomes negative. So then cosine squared T, oh, I'm missing T here. I'm, I'm missing T above line. So cosine squared T equals to well, what's one? One is a 16 over 16, right? Minus one over 16. So change this one to be 16 over 16 because subtracting those two numbers, we need a common denominator. Now we have common denominator 16, we can subtract the numerator. 16 minus one, we get 15. So we get a cosine squared T equals to 15 over 16. Now we need to square root both sides. So on the square root, square root of cosine, we get a cosine, square root of cosine square, we get a cosine. Then we get a square root of 15 over 16. We get a positive or negative. But what in the third quadrant, third quadrant cosine value be negative. So we put a negative sign up front. We choose a negative value. So cosine t be negative in the third quadrant. So cosine t equals a negative square root of 15 over 16. Square root of 15, we don't know what it is, we just keep it. But we know square root of 16. So square root of 16 is a 4. So we get a cosine t equals to negative square root of 15 over 4. Anybody has any question? And then once we have sine t, cosine t, you can find a tangent t. Tangent t equals to sine t over cosine t.
or tangent t equals to what sine t? Sine t is a negative one quarter, then divided by cosine t. Cosine t is negative square root of 15 divided by 4. Negative divided by negative give us positive. One quarter divided by square root 15 over 4, we can change it to be quarter times 4 over square root of 15. We change division into multiplication. Then we take the second term, take the inverse of the second term. So quarter times 4 over square root of 5, we get 1 over square root of, not 5, square root of 15. Right? Then we rationalize, we need to rationalize the denominator because denominator is the square root of 15. So we multiply, we multiply square root of 15 over itself. So we multiply square root of 15 over square root of 15. Simplify this, so we get tangent equals to square root, square root of 15 over 15. So we get sine, cosine, and tangent. Now we need other two, so we need other three. Secant, right? Cosecant. Cosecant t equals to 1 over sine. 1 over sine t. Which is, which is flip the numerator and denominator of sine. So which is a negative 4. Right? Secant t, definition of secant t, cosecant t is 1 over sine. So we get negative 4 over 1. 4 over 1 is 4, so we don't write it over 1, just negative 4. Secant t equals to 1 over cosine t, which is which is a flip the cosine over, right? So we get cosine equals to negative square root of 15 over 4. So when we flip, we still get a negative number, negative 4 over square root of 15. Then we need to rationalize this denominator because denominator is the square root of 15. We want to rationalize it. So secant, secant t equals to negative 4 over square root of 15 times 1, and this one is the square root of 15 divided by itself. If we do that, we simplify, we get a negative 4 square root of 15 over 15. That's our secant t. So lastly, we have cotangent t. Cotangent equals 1 over tangent. Right, that's the definition. Cotangent t equals 1 over tangent. And so cotangent t equals to, well, what's tangent t? Tangent t, we say here, is a 1 over square root of 15, right? So that just equals, uh, we flip over, we just get the square root of 15. We get, so here we get six values. So we have six trigonometry functions. So we get a sine. Sine is a given, right? So first one, sine. The second one, cosine, we solved, so cosine value, then tangent value, tangent, so three, and cosecant, four, secant, five, and cotangent, six. So have six trigonometry functions. Sine, cosine, tangent. Cosecant, secant, cotangent. Okay, anyone has any question?
Okay, Jeremy, do you feel comfortable to try one? Follow the step, draw the triangle. Yeah, I can. I mean, I'm gonna just keep trying. I don't. Yeah, let's try one. Let's say 100%, but like. That's okay. Let's try together. It's it's yeah. very difficult to get everything right in the first place. Yeah. When I learned, it took me a long time. I don't really remember how long. It took me a long while to get you know to get a gist of it. Let's let's try. So, so try one. Okay. Just want to try. Then James, then later on, James, try one. Anna, Anna is here. Maybe Natalie, Sarah. Okay, I'll choose one to try and I'll help you. Because it's, a, it's a really difficult. That's why we spend time on this. Maybe you maybe use the black, uh, the blank whiteboard. The next topic is I'm going to talk about the graph of a sine and cosine and, and tangent. Okay, what, what, what do you guys want me to do? Should I go ahead and talk about the graphs of the trig functions? Or should we spend more time on this, you know, figuring out the trig values? I don't mind learning you know about what? graphs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, James. Uh, I don't mind learning about the graphs. Oh, should, should we talk about the graphs? Graphs is kind of easy. Yeah, I, I like. I find graphs to be easy too. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the graphs then. So this weekend, maybe you guys keep working on a homework at sixteen. All right. Sixteen is quite difficult. Sixteen and fifteen. Sixteen. Okay, and maybe from 14, make sure, make sure 14, 15, 16, you know, struggle with it. And uh, if, you, if you have questions, we'll, talk, we'll keep talking about next week. So because it's weekend, so let me talk about new things so I can leave you some homework. So let's talk about graph of trig functions, right? So as I emphasized before, right, if we know sign, you know, you've given us a one value of trig, trig value. You know, we can solve for the rest of the five. So, you know, if we know sine, basically we know the rest of the other trig functions. So sine is very important to know. Okay, let's see the first one. This one I talked a little bit before. Because if a sine, if an angle, if the angle we can break up to be t plus 2m pi, we could just ignore the 2m pi. We could just ignore the 2m pi. The idea comes from, you know, we start, we, we start from a point on this x-axis, then we're running around with circles. So running one circle, that's 2 pi. We're running two circles, that's 4 pi. We come back to zero. So 2 pi come back to 0, 4 pi come to 0, 6 pi come to back to 0, 8 pi comes back to 0. So all the even pi's come back to 0. So that's why we could ignore 2 m pi. Anybody has questions? Oh, yes, I'm sharing my screen. No, I'm sorry. Did not show it? Did they show it now? Oh, no? Anybody else see it? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Okay, good. 
So I was talking about this. I was talking about this property. The so sine of the angle, if the angle can be written as an angle t plus 2m pi, we can forget about the 2m pi. Because we measure angles starting from the zero, from, from this point zero, right? When we run 2 pi, they come back to zero. So zero is the same as 2 pi here. Run two circles, that's a 4 pi. Run two, so n represents any number. n represents, n is called a natural number. So n, n represents a natural number. Natural number or counting number. It means one, two, three, so on, so forth. That's n. You can see this 2n pi represents for 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, a pi, so on and so forth, all the even pi's. Remember one example, we talk about a 7 pi over 3. 7 pi over 3. Right, 7 pi over 3, you can write as a 6 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. Right, 7 pi, we can break up 7 pi into 6 pi and 1 pi. And then 6 pi over 3, that's 2 pi, plus pi over 3. So if we talk about sine 7 pi over 3, the same as sine pi over 3, because we can just forget about this 2 pi. Right, so sine 7 pi over 3 equals to sine pi over 3. Right. Similarly, if we add another 2 pi, right, we will get 13 pi over 3. 13 pi over 3 equals to 4 pi plus pi over 3. So sine 13 pi over 3 equals, also equals to sine pi over 3. So that's why in a notation we just use the sine of t plus 2n pi. N can be one or be two or three, so on and so forth. It's same for cosine. So cosine t plus two n pi. If we can break up the angle with the angle plus two n pi, we just forget about the two n pi. So that equals the cosine t. So those two are important properties. All right. So the picture is that. Picture is you know if we. Let's see if the angle is here, right? If we add 2n pi, what's the picture? The picture is we're just running around. We're running around. Oops. Think about we have this point, right? We're running around one. We're running around two. But all those guys end up at the same point. And then we call that one coterminal, the line formed with the origin called coterminal. So also, so we use a word called a periodic property. So functions are being periodic. That means this, sine of t plus two pi equals to sine t. So the period is two pi. Cosine t plus two pi equals to cosine t. Well, same thing for four pi. Sine t plus 4 pi equals to sine t. Sine t plus 6 pi equals to sine t, so on and so forth. So the period of sine and cosine are 2 pi. So that give us a graph. That give us this graph. Let me mark some important points. Remember, we have a table. Right, let's use this table. We said that this value is important, remember? Sine pi over 6 equals the half, right? Cosine pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Cosine pi over 3 is half. You see this? Because pi over 6 and pi over 3 are complementary angles. Complementary angles form co-functions. So sine of pi over 6 equals the cosine of pi over 3. And the sine of pi over 3 
equals to cosine of pi over six. Right, so that's a relation because they're co-functions. But those two angles are complementary angles. Um, okay, so we want to use something called the five points. Five points graphing. So we use some special angles. We use angle zero. We use angle pi over two. So this would be pi over two. What's the sign? So sine zero is zero, right? Sine zero is zero. Sine pi over two is one. Sine pi over two is one. And then sine pi, we use also use pi. So pi, this point is pi. And this, this axis measures the angle. This axis measures the angle. This measures the y value, which is a sine, sine value. So zero comma zero, and the pi over two comma one, and the pi comma zero, and then we have this point. This point, the three pi over two is this one, this one. So sine three pi over two is negative one. Okay, so this here is a three pi over two. And last one is two pi. So sine two pi equals zero. Right? We could think if we use this unit circle method, we see it's a whole circle, right? So this is a half semicircle. This is a semicircle. The whole thing is makes a unit unit circle. But when we draw the graph of y equals to sine t or function, right? Let's talk about in function case f of, so f of t equals to sine t. f of t, think about the function. So this is the graph of the function. This is the graph of the function for sine. So we have these important five points, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. All right, we use these five special points to graph, zero, pi over two, then pi, then three pi over two, then two pi. Okay, we use these five points. And of course, we can draw more points, right? We can sine pi over six equals the half, right? Somewhere here, pi over six, right? Pi over six equals the half. But normally, normally we just draw a graph like this. We use the five point method. We know the curve, the sine curve looks like this, right? For sine pi over six, sine pi over six equals a half. Think about this is sine pi over six. This is a pi over six. Then pi over three equals root three over two. Root three over two, so this is pi over three. Then pi over two equals sine pi over two equals one. Then sine two pi over three. Again, you could root three over two. Then sine five pi over six equals the half. This is the sine pi over six equals the half. Right? We connect all those points, so we have this smooth curve. We have this smooth curve. And if we keep going, if we keep going, we we'll get sine seven pi over six. We get a negative half sine four pi over three we get negative root three over two or sine three pi over two we get negative one sine five pi over three we get negative three over two sine eleven pi over six we get negative a half right then sine two pi we get zero we could use this table values to graph. So we get, a, we get a curve up from zero to pi, then curve down from pi to two pi. Okay, so this is a sine graph. We have these five important points. We have zero, zero, pi over two, comma one, pi, comma zero, 
three pi over two comma negative one and two pi comma zero. These important five points. Anybody has any questions? Okay, and then we can keep going, right? We can, we can measure negative value. So if we can do a sine of negative pi over two, that would be negative sine pi over two, would be negative one. So every zero to two pi, every two pi gives a period. You see from zero to two pi, the graph is exactly from two pi, same as from two pi to four pi. So this is also one period from to two, four pi. Right, this is one period. From four pi to six pi is another copy of the graph from zero to two pi. So from zero to two pi, it finishes one period. Then keeps going another period. It keeps going, keeps going, keeps going forever. And also goes to the negative infinity, right? You see from here, from negative two pi to zero is a period. Negative four pi to negative four pi to two pi is a period. Negative six pi to negative four pi is one period. So every two pi measure makes one period of the graph. So that's why we only graph this. Only graph this, because it's pure attic. Pure attic. It repeats. The graph repeats itself. So that's sign. That's sign. And then we notice that the biggest sign value is one. The smallest sign value is negative one. So sign value is being bounded from negative one to one. Okay, let's see cosine. Cosine is very similar. Cosine is also periodic. But let's see if we have table value. We don't have table values. Oh, here, we use here. So cosine zero equals to one. So cosine zero at zero, cosine value equals to one. Cosine pi over six is root three over two. Cosine pi over six is root three over two. Cosine pi over three equals to half. Cosine two pi equals to zero. Cosine two pi over three, negative root three over, over two. Cosine five pi over six is negative half. Cosine, so on, cosine pi, negative one. Cosine seven pi over six, negative root three over two. Cosine four pi over three, negative half. Cosine three pi over two, zero. We keep going, cosine five pi over three, root three over two. Oh, half. Cosine 11 pi over six, root three over two. Cosine two pi, one. So also from zero to two pi, cosine finishes one period. Looks like this. If we draw one, if we draw more period, so we see this is a period, the, uh, the red color, then the purple color from two pi to four pi is a period, from four pi to six pi is a period, so on and so forth. Also the negative side, from negative two pi to zero is a period, negative four pi to two pi is a period, so on and so forth. So when, when I'm talking right now, actually my mouth is making a wave, it's making a sine cosine value, right? That's how we use in life. The sound, the sound I'm making is a wave. You see, this is like a wave. The sound I'm making is actually a sine cosine function. But let's observe these two pictures. Let's see, let's see sine. If we look at from this point to this point of the sine graph, we see that's exactly the same. As cosine, right? So, so this is a pi over two here. So the point here is pi over two. Think about the transformation functions. Do we see 
sine. So according to the function, right? Sine t equals to cosine of pi over two. Pi over two is ninety, right? Minus t. Right? It's the function. It's the function being shifted. What we can observe from this, if we think about from this, if we look at the cosine function, right? If we look at this piece in between of those two bars, that's exactly the same as the sine. So the cosine function and sine function are shifting, are shifting, are transformation, right? So sine function equals to the cosine function being shifted 90 degree to the right, right? So that's why we call them co-functions. Co-functions, remember sine, let's look at this. Let's think about a sine pi over six that equals the cosine pi over two minus pi over six which is cosine pi over three. The cosine, so sine 30 equals the cosine of 90 minus 30, which is cosine 60. Because 60 and 30 are complementary angles. Add them together, they become 90. So sine and cosine, you see, if we know sine, we know cosine. It's just a graph being shifted. All right, any questions? Can you please repeat that? Okay. So we see the sine, let's look at the sine function, right? If we look at from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, not to 3 pi over 2, to uh, 5 pi over 2. Let's mark this one. So 5 pi over 2. Do we, see, do we see the graph? We see the graph is exactly cosine graph, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, this piece is exactly this piece, this, this cosine graph. Let me not mark this. So that's why we see if we if we look at this sign from 0 to 2 pi, we can look at this. We can look at the cosine. And this point is negative pi over 2, right? Negative, let me mark this. Negative pi over 2. You see, this piece is exactly the same as the sine graph. So that's why we write sine t equals to cosine pi minus t. Right. Or if you want, I can write at this, t minus pi over 2. Maybe this is more obvious. t minus pi over 2. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because the cosine is an even function. Cosine of negative t equals to, let me write this, cosine negative t equals to cosine t. That's why it doesn't matter of this, this. The t minus pi over 2 is the same as pi minus cosine pi minus t. But writing this way is obvious to talk about transformation. So we see clearly from those two pictures. Sine t is cosine, the angle being pushed to the right, pi over 2 degree. Right? Because this is a horizontal transformation, right? The variable minus something. Horizontal transformation. But in any case, just try with yourself, okay, to draw the graph of sine with those values. Draw the graph of cosine with these values. Right. Those are special values. 
Okay, any other question? All right, so those are graph of sine and cosine, and they are closely related, the transformation with each other. Well, if we graph two plus cos x or negative cos x, let's see the graph. So this graph, this blue color is a cosine graph, cosine x. Now if we add to it, it's just the graph being pushed two units up by right? transformation of functions. So this is a two here. It's been pushed up two units. And if we put a negative sign in front of a negative cosine, that's a reflection over x axis. You see, we have a cosine graph here, right? Now, the positive value being negate, right, being negative value. And the positive value, be, the negative value before, now because we put the negative sign, it becomes a positive value. So negative cosine is a reflection over x axis of cosine x. This is reflection. Uh, here show us, we can put a number in front of a sine x. Uh, the blue color is just sine x, the blue color. The red color is two sine x. So every y value be multiplied by two. So one before here, the y value one before now become two, right? A half before and becomes one, and so on and so forth. And if it's half of sine x, one before now become half. Half before now become quarter. Right? We have a scalar in front of the function sine. If we put a negative sign, that becomes a reflection over x axis. Okay, so the sine and cosine curves, we can write it as a, a number before sine. And then the angle has a scalar also, kx. kx, or sine, cosine also. So the function can be written as a, a number, multiplied by cosine of kx. The angle has a scalar of k. And we have some terms for this. So we call A, absolute value of A, amplitude. Well, let's see what's the amplitude. The number before sign, right? You see in this case, the amplitude is three because the highest point is a three, the lowest point is negative three. So absolute value of that, that's a three, positive three. So the amplitude for this function is a three. For this one is a half. For this one is one. For this one is two. Because the absolute value of negative two is two. That means the lowest point is negative two, the highest point is positive two. The amplitude tells us the range, the range of the function, right? For sine, the amplitude is one, so the range goes from negative one to one. For half of a sine x, the range goes from negative half to half. For three sine x, the range goes from negative three up to three. So that's the amplitude. Another term is called a period. Period. So let's see this one. So what is a period? Period is two pi divided by the k, divided by the number before x. Is k the angle? K is not an angle. K is a number multiplied by the angle. Multiplied by the angle. Let's see this example. You see here we have sine 2x. So let's figure out A and K. So that means amplitude equals 1, right? Because the number before sine is 1. What's K? Oops. K equals 2. Then let's figure out the period. So amplitude is one. What's the period? Period is two pi divided by k. So p e r i o d. Remember, for sine x, period is two pi, right? We need two pi to make one period. 
But if we put a number before the angle, in this case, we have two x, the period becomes two pi divided by two. Two pi divided by two, which is just pi. That means for sine two x, in pi, we made one period. And we can see from this graph, you see from zero up to pi, we finish one period, right? We could use some table method, right? Because if, if, angle, if angle equals pi, we have two times pi, that's two pi. So zero to two pi, zero to pi, we finished one period. But what about is k is half? The amplitude we see, the amplitude is still one from negative one up to one, right? For the same thing, for the number before sine is one. So the amplitude still goes from negative one, the range still goes from negative one to one. But with this half, the period is being changed. So the period is two pi divided by half. What's two pi divided by half? That's two pi times two, which is four pi. That means we need a four pi to finish one period. And we see indeed from this picture, right? Because we're half of it. And two pi, so half of two pi is pi, right? This is a half. So from zero to four pi, we finish one period. Does this make sense? Anyone has any question? So if the number is a, a fraction, the period increase like gets longer. Yeah, if the if k is less than one, the period is bigger. If k is bigger than one, the period is smaller. Because you think about it, if k is bigger than one, we reach we uh, reach the end of the period quicker. If the k is less than one, we end the period slower. But still, we focus on those five important points. We focus on zero. We focus on one. We focus on zero. We focus on this negative one. We focus on this. We focus on these five points. Here, same thing. Focus on this one. We focus on this one. We focus on this one, and this one, and this one. If you have trouble to 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 look at this, you know, plug in the value. Plug in the five points. Remember the five point, the five important values of angle. Zero pi over two, three pi over two pi and two pi. Okay. If we plug in sine two times zero, still sine zero, so we'll get a zero zero. Then if it's pi over two, pi over two times two, that's sine pi. Right? Sine pi equals zero. Sine pi equals zero. Then we'll have to take some middle ones like uh, pi over pi over six pi over four but for this four we have pi over four for this for this one let me move this for this one let's let me use for this one convince yourself with zero pi over four pi over two and uh, three pi over two, or uh, three pi over four, and pi. For this graph, these five points are this: a zero pi over four, because pi over four times two will be pi over two. Sine pi over two is one. Then pi over two times two that will be pi. Sine pi is zero. And then 3 pi over 4 times 2 is 3 pi over 2. Sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And pi times 2 is 2 pi. Sine 2 pi equals 0. For this one, 
use we could use more point but let's try to stay with the five points we use zero we use pi we use two pi we use three pi we use four pi okay because we're half of it zero times half is still zero still get a zero comma zero then we have pi pi times half that's pi over two right we get this one then two pi times half that's pi sine pi equals zero right then three pi times half that's three pi over two sine three pi over two is negative one and four pi times half that's two pi sine two pi equals zero so focus on the five point uh, yeah and also you know convince yourself you see here we have two x or half x or one third of x let's look at those two so we have four that means the amplitude goes from negative four up to four the range of function goes from negative four up to four 3x, right? So 2 pi divided by 3, that means 3 pi, 3 pi, 2, 2 pi divided by 3. So 2 pi divided by 3 give us a period. You see this period, this cosine function, right? You see this is one period finished right here. So one period finished right here. So the 2 pi over 3. So this is one period. And for the second function, negative two, negative two, first they flipped, flipped the function, right? Flip the function sine. Sine was here before, now being flipped over x axis, right? This is sine. Think about sine first. Then this function is being flipped because of the negative. Then the amplitude goes from negative two to two. Then this is the half, right? Two pi divided by half, that's four pi. So we need four pi to finish one period. All right, I'll leave some homework so you can practice on this. Um, so let's see, so homework 17. Okay, so let's try one. You know, one and two are always conceptual. One and two. Then let's draw. Let's draw three. Let's draw three up to seven. Yeah, three up to seven is good. So three up to seven. Then let's draw seventeen up to twenty. All right, seventeen up to twenty. So let me write in here. So this is a homework 17. We're going to do one up one up to seven. Then 17 up to 20. All right, so you have something to do during this weekend. And uh, one to seven, 17 up to 20. Uh, 20, okay, I, let me leave you a little more because 20, this talking about the co-functions because I mentioned already. So let's do 29 to 32, all right? Then 29 to 32. Just to practice on it. Uh, okay, anyone has any question? Okay, um, if no question, have a good weekend, all right? Have a good day and have a good weekend. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. I guess who's going to have a Thanksgiving? It's going to be so hard. My two children are not coming back home. So I'm going to spend Thanksgiving all by myself.
Anyway, happy Thanksgiving and keep up with your good work. So we'll talk about next time, all right? Oh, do we have class on Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Yes, we do. Yes, we, we do, right before Thanksgiving. So let's meet right before Thanksgiving. Yes, we do have class. Okay. All right, if you have a homework problem, try to work with our tutor, okay? The tutor is assigned only for us. Let's take advantage of it. Okay. All right, have a good day. Thank you.